And now it's time for us to discuss more of these headlines and simple keywords. Adam joining us via Zoom. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Lena. Happy Election Day. Happy Election Day. South Koreans are headed to the polls today to select a new parliament. 300 seats up for grabs. Let's start there. This is our first keyword of the day. Election Day. So polls have opened for the 22nd general election, shaping parliament for the next four years. It is also seen as a midterm referendum on President Yoon. Um, if the DP retains majority, it might be a tough battle for President Yoon. Tell us more. Yeah, so there's uh, up to uh, 300 seats uh, available or up for grabs. Polling opened at 6 a.m., so we're just over an hour into uh, voting at the moment. So it will end at 6 p.m. across over 14,200 polling stations. Early, for, uh, early results are expected by tomorrow morning or the wee hours of tomorrow morning. So it might take a little bit longer than uh, before. Now, voters cast their ballots for both district candidates and proportional representation parties. In some areas, up to three ballots may be cast, including for by-elections. Now, after polls close, ballots are transferred for counting, with a new verification counting step added to enhance transparency. This involves manual confirmation of each ballot after they've been sorted by the machine. However, due to uh, the unprecedented length of the proportional represent uh, representation ballots, additional staff has been deployed as well. Now, the counting process is expected to take longer than the usual nine and a half uh, hour average of the previous election. So, yeah, if you're... Um, I wouldn't wait too much for the results if you're <laughs> uh, trying to resist going to bed to get the results. It might be, yeah, sometime, as you say, around 2 a.m. Uh, or somewhere about that time. Mm. Now, final results for district winners are anticipated early uh, tomorrow morning with proportional representation seats to be determined later in the day. Uh, parties have been making their final appeals to voters yesterday, the last day of campaigning. The People Power Party is aiming for a victory in Seoul and the surrounding areas. Uh, it chose Chungye Plaza or Chungye Stream in Seoul for their last rally. Han dong the interim chief, questioned if it was right to hand over power to what he called the scandal-ridden opposition. And he also promised to fulfill the PPP's plans, including moving the National Assembly to Sejong City, ending the financial investment income tax, and rearranging Seoul and Gyeonggi Province's districts as well. Now, the Democratic Party held its final rally near the president's office in Yongsan, emphasizing their message to judge the current government. Lee jae myung the DP chief, claimed that the UN government has caused regression in all aspects of the country, in his words, including the economy, diplomacy, national security and uh, democracy, basically saying this vote is a referendum on his tenure. So, mm. yeah, a lot of uh, mudslinging uh, there uh, as usual. Uh, and we'll have to see a lot of hotly contested areas in Seoul. Yeah. We're a bit too close to call. So it's hard to say which party has the advantage. Um, but uh, usually if we have, if we look at the trends of previous uh, general elections. Usually the opposition parties have the upper hand, usually, but uh, we'll have to see if any changes come about this time mm. around. It has really quickly become a bitter contest between the two arch rivals. Uh, I saw the New York Times call it gladiator politics. I, I think well. that's a pretty good description of what's been happening, but we'll let see a lot at stakes. Uh, that's pro probably what it's at going. <laughs> Yeah, today is going to be the Colosseum, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't travel to Rome, bring it here. Right. All right, let's move on to our second keyword of the day. Chip cluster. So the government is accelerating its efforts to build a semiconductor mega cluster in Yongin with the help of uh, big giants, Samsung Electronics and SK Hynix. Uh, what's the latest? I mean, this is a, a mega plan. South Korea aiming to take up 10 percent of the chip market share for all of AI. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So this is basically in response to well, somewhat in response to the intense competition around the world where countries are offering big subsidies to support their semiconductor uh, industries locally to keep up. The government here is also going to quickly come up with incentives for companies investing here at home. We've seen cases of this like in the U.S. as well, the CHIPS Act, for example, uh, and the uh, Inflation Reduction 
Action Act also, but that's usually more towards the uh, electric vehicle aspect of things. Mm. Now, in, additionally, in response to the AI era, the government is focusing its national R&D capabilities on semiconductor AI technology innovation to leap into the top three global AI countries. Now, in a, le in a meeting led by President Yoon on semiconductor issues, the government discussed the progress of the semiconductor mega cluster and the AI semiconductor initiative. Now, the meeting highlighted the need for solid infrastructure support to allow companies to invest properly in the mega cluster. Uh, the government plans to expand financial support for companies as well. It plans to make the process for environmental impact assessments quicker and ensure that enough water is supplied for uh, Samsung Electronics's system semiconductor cluster and SK Hynix's semiconductor cluster. Of course, there needs to be a lot of cooling uh, when it comes to producing and manufacturing uh, semiconductors. Now, to compete in the global so-called subsidy war, the government will create in, uh, incentive programs for domestic investments in high-tech companies and is considering extending uh, tax benefits for big semiconductor investments. They're also looking to train more experts in the field as well by adding more specialized semiconductor universities and colleges. Uh, President Yoon has vowed to make Korea one of the three leading nations in the world in terms of AI technology. He says AI chips are rapidly dominating the semiconductor market. Of course, a lot of um, chips that are being made now uh, have AI in mind. Um, and it's a big business model for a lot of these tech companies. Now, to aid the effort, the government here will invest 9.4 trillion won in AI and AI chips by the year 2027. It'll also create a 1.4 trillion won fund to help the growth of mm. AI chip companies as well. So... Yeah, it's going to be a, an ambitious project, but mm. that mega cluster is certainly in the works. Mm, I mean, it's about uh, South Korea's competitive edge, right? What will be our bread and butter semiconductor related goods account for 20 percent of total exports as we speak. So this is an important yeah. industry. How do we become the top three uh, providers for AI chips? We'll leave it there for now. Let's move on to our third keyword of the day. Naval inspection. So getting a closer look at illegal fishing in South Korean waters, President Yoon has ordered the Coast Guard to sternly clamp down on illegal fishing by Chinese vessels, especially during the crab season. He made the remarks as he inspected how the Coast Guard is cracking down on illegal fishing, particularly in the West Sea. Right. So he emphasized the need for a strong response to illegal fishing, not just for protecting marine resources like crabs or other fishes, but also uh, for national security as well. And he criticized the previous government for not taking firm action due to concerns about China's reaction, noting that this negligence, as he put it, led to significant harm to Korean fishermen. Now, Yoon highlighted the importance of not yielding to the influence of surrounding powerful countries like China and ensuring the livelihoods and safety of Korea Korean citizens. And he noted that even North Korea, which is China's close military ally, takes strong actions against uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese fishing boats operations, uh, illegal operations. Now, to support the Coast Guard in their mission, he promised improvements in their treatments and equipment modernization as well. He also mentioned introducing specialized ships for boarding illegal uh, fishing vessels and updating the Coast Guard's safety gear. Uh, and while he was inspecting the vessels, he received reports on future plans for a comprehensive crackdown on illegal fishing. This included plans for the construction of crucial facilities like fueling stations and refrigeration facilities for mm. fishing operations to be fast-tracked in cooperation with financial authorities. He also paid tribute to fallen Coast Guard officers who had died in the line of duty. Uh, this visit follows his directive last month for a strong response to illegal fishing after a fisherman in Yasu raised concerns about fishing vessels depleting fish uh, stocks. That um, concern was raised in this uh, government public debate that uh, President Yoon has been uh, undertaking for a while. Now, the government has since stepped up enforcement, capturing several illegal fishing boats and making significant efforts to protect marine resources and uh, fishermen's livelihoods as well. So he's basically doubling down on those calls and efforts. Uh, and it's been a years, not a long term concern that Chinese uh, vessels are illegally intruding into South Korean waters and mm -hmm. 
uh, basically depleting the resources uh, at sea. Mm, so how do we further crack down on it? Uh, that's part of the president's plan. We'll leave it there for now so we can move on to the ongoing medical strike. A rift is growing within the medical uh, circle, as we rightfully pointed out, is expected yesterday. Uh, let's move on to our fourth keyword of the day. Internal conflict. So the Korean Medical Association is canceling the planned joint press conference with other doctors, groups and medical professors. This comes amid signs of apparent internal conflicts over how to respond to the government's plan to increase a medical student quota. As you alluded to, it's a large group of people with perhaps varying personal and professional interests. So what's the latest, Adam? Right. So the KMA said it needs basically more time for mm. negotiations with the trainee doctors. It had announced plans for a joint press conference after the elections today to express a unified stance. It was expected to come uh, tomorrow or Friday at the latest. Now, this move sparked expectations of establishing a unified platform for dialogue with the government, potentially accelerating discussions on medical reform. Yet it turned out to be wishful thinking on the KMA's part without an actual agreement from the residents who were on strike. And Pak Dan, head of the emergency committee at the Korea Intern Resident Association, said through social media that there was no agreement to hold such a press conference. Now, the KMA's emergency committee also appears to be at odds with Im Hyun Tae, the newly appointed KMA president, who has uh, taken a hardline approach toward the government. The conflict seems to be with moderates who are more willing to talk and possibly make some concessions as well, especially in light of more pressure from the government in terms of um, their actions against striking trainee doctors. Now, despite the setbacks, the KMA reiterated its unified position to discuss the medical school expansion plan. It's just a matter of reaching a consensus within themselves on their own stance, which mm. seems to be pretty much divided at the moment. So we'll have to see how long it'll take if they do come to any unified uh, consensus. But um, it's not going to come soon, mm. uh, a lot of uh, watchers believe. And of course, uh, the talks with the government as well will also likely be a lengthy process as well. All right, with that, we move on to our final keyword of the day. Chinese official to North Korea. So China's third highest ranking official, Zhao Liji, will lead a delegation to North Korea this week. This would be the highest level meeting between the two countries since the start of the pandemic and the reopening of the borders. What can we expect? Right. So the chairman of the National People's Congress will visit North Korea from Thursday to Saturday. No details were released on what was described as just a goodwill visit uh, by China's foreign ministry, except that the delegation would attend the opening ceremony for what's known as the China-North Korea Friendship Year. They're celebrating uh, 75 years of diplomatic ties. A dispatch from North Korea's official uh, Korea Central News Agency also announced the trip. Zhao is a member of the powerful Politburo Bureau Standing Committee, and it'll be his first trip to Pyongyang since he became chairman of China's top legislative body. Now, North Korea and China are expected to hold a number of exchanges to mark uh, the 75th uh, year since they established diplomatic ties. Kim Jong-un has been pushing to boost partnerships with China and Russia as of late uh, in a bid to strengthen his regional footing and join uh, a united front against the United States. Experts believe Sal's visit could be laying the groundwork for an upcoming visit by Kim to Beijing to strengthen cooperation between the allies. There have been some delegations visiting North Korea. We had one uh, about a month ago, but this would be the highest level one since the reopening of North Korea's borders. So we don't know too much details on mm. what to expect. Uh, so we'll have to wait until the meeting is uh, over. And even by then, we probably won't get all the details, but we'll have to see. We'll get drips and drabs and further analysis. And we'll count on you to weed through the noise. Thank you so much, Adam, cool. for today's coverage. Happy Election Day. <laughs> Happy Election Day. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.